Welcome to the Micromark Workshop. Today we're going to discuss arbor presses and their usefulness. Micromark offers two arbor presses. Um, an arbor press is a hand-operated press. It is typically used to perform jobs such as staking, riveting, installing, stamping, and configuring and removing bearings and other press fit work. Um, arbor presses are an extremely versatile tool that is used in a wide range of professions such as jewelers, clothes makers, automotive mechanics, and metal workers. There are just a few people who could find value in an arbor press, but even the do-it-yourself hobbyist can use an arbor press for everyday press jobs. Arbor presses range in tonnage from five pounds of force for precision jobs to five tons for heavy-duty machinery. This larger arbor press, number 87402, produces up to a thousand pounds of force, a half ton of power. The 87402, our half-ton arbor press is a unique tool and exclusive to us. No other arbor press available today comes with the capability and features that this tool provides straight out of the box. It comes with a stop for the ram. It comes with several Allen wrenches. It comes with a spare center cap screw, an adapter for the different plugs we offer. It also comes with three standard punches round, pointed, and flat. What makes this arbor press unique to ex and exclusive for Micromark? I'll show you. Number one, you're not gonna be searching for your tooling because I've designed it with onboard storage for the punches on both the left and the right side. Secondly, our table rotates just like all the other tables out there on arbor presses because it needs to but ours can also offset 360 degrees up to 3 16ths of an inch from center. And even more importantly, it can be locked into any position for providing stable platform and pr precise repeated operations. All of the other arbor presses simply have a pin on the bottom of their table and it sits in a hole and all it does is spin around. As I said, this arbor plate can be locked into position straight out of the box into any position you might need. There's a cap screw in the center that you turn with the Allen wrench and now it's fully locked for precise repeated operations. What makes this lock is our wing nut combination with the cap screw underneath the unit. The wing nut engages the body of the unit and makes it lockable and unlockable. The maneuverability of this table is provided as I instructed before by the cap screw and the wing nut underneath. It's an M6.1 screw and wing nut. Um, it allows you most of all the versatility you'll need in order to maneuver your, your table into the position that you need. However, we also provide an M5 screw and wing nut combination that allows for the full versatility of the 3 16ths of movement that you'll get out of our arbor press table. Continuing on with the arbor press table, it's also been designed with a 7 16th 20 threaded hole that holds our special dies that we also sell with a small presset I discussed earlier. When you purchase the 87402 press, it comes mostly assembled. There's, small, there's a small amount of assembly that's required um, and degreasing of the parts. Um, the ram comes installed. Um, the ram lock does not. That's simply passing it over top and setting it with these two set screws in place. You install the um, arm uh, onto the unit and lock it in place wherever you want. It comes with uh, four gib adjustments, two on the left side and two in the front. Um, there are set nuts on these. Once you have the movement of the ram without any wobble left and right, and also um, not dragging to prevent you move from moving it very easily. So there is an adjustment that needs made here once you get it set up. There is a set screw in the ram. Um, there is a counter bore in the center of the ram that's three-eighths of an inch, and that is there to accept the different tooling that we provide with it. Um, also, 
it's used with mounting the press, uh, press tips and dies um, and all the other tooling that the smaller press comes with can now be used with this larger version. Um, this RAM is not hardened. Um, if you ever wanted to uh, modify the RAM on the other side for a particular shape or a point that you wanted to do with it, you could because it's not hardened. Um, the tips are what's hardened. It's appropriate now that we talk about how to mount the Arbor Press to your bench. Uh, there are two holes located in the backside, one on either side. These are your holes where you can use carriage bolts or nuts and bolts and have, have drilled into your table in order to mount the unit. You want the unit to overhang the front of your bench because you may need to have access to this area right here um, for different punching applications, um, pressing applications, um, and you need to make sure that these two holes and the whatever you use firmly hold the unit in place because it's by the force of this ram that you're going to be doing your operation and it's going to want to pick up off the back side. You don't want that to happen. So mounting is very important. The ram has a set screw in it. Uh, that screw, screw is meant to hold the shank of the different tooling that comes with the tool. You need to loosen the set screw a bit. Insert the 3 8 inch shank up inside and tighten down your set screw. And now you can perform your pressing operation. The ram collar lock, which I mentioned before, has two set screws in the front, which I tightened very well before. These can be mounted in any position you need to have this locking mechanism in place. It simply slides over the ram. I'm going to lock it in place right here. The actual stopping of the ram is located and provided by this nut which you release. And you would screw this down and it comes down underneath the unit. And if that's where I needed to stop consistently every time, I'd lock it in place with a wrench and it will consistently stop the unit in the same spot. With the Arbor Press, you get a special adapter with which to mount the adapter, another adapter for the punches and dies that are an accessory for this machine. And I'll show you how to do that now. This simply slips up inside. It is held in place by the front set screw. Tight. You unscrew that cap screw. And slip this over. And you'll find the hole. And you'll tighten that down. Firmly. The other plastic screw in the back is the piece that part that holds your punch up inside this adapter. And you need to fully insert it all the way up. Rotate the little screw in the back. You can position this in the front, the back, on the side, whatever you'd like, whatever's most convenient for you. And now I've locked the punch in place on the ram. Next, we're going to install the matching die um, into the table. Of note here is that there is a notch cut out at the base of this, of this die. That's for a screwdriver, um, so that you can screw it in and screw it out of the unit. Mostly, you won't need it. Uh, you can screw it in from the top or the bottom. Another reason why we leave this gap over the edge of our workbench because we may need to get in there with a screwdriver in order to install it at the height with which we want. I want this flat in this case. So I'm going to, you can see the die is going down. I want it to be flat with the surface. So I'm going to 
put that on it to make sure I'm flat. And that's where I want my die at this particular time, even with the table surface. It can go up as high as you want it, mm -hmm. or in this case, we want it flat for my next operation. And that's flat. Now, the versatility of the table. Um, you wouldn't be able to do this with any other Arbor Press table on the market, but that's why this is so versatile. I'm going to line up my punch with my die, and now I'm going to take my big Allen wrench here, and with the center screw, I'm going to lock the table in place because I want to be doing repeated operations here, punching out material. And now it enters it every time. Okay, I've got my punch and my dial set up. My table's locked. I've adjusted my handle so I'm in a, a good working place. Um, I'm going to show you how to punch out. This is tin, and it's uh, probably about 1 seconds thick. And if I ever wanted to do a bunch of inline holes, which I've already done here when I was using the unit before, um, it's easy enough to do. I've changed out my punch and die for the 1 8th, which is the max size we carry currently. And you can see it punches very nicely. I now have removed the punch and the die that was in earlier. Um, I've removed its adapter. I've kept installed the adapter that comes with the Arbor Press. And now I'm using one of the tooling from the nine piece tooling set from 83708. Uh, this is the pointed punch. Um, this tool can help you make simulated rivets in materials, both in styrene and soft metals um, for panel lines. Okay, we've uh, changed out the unit for its operation. Uh, we've included the cone tip point um, from the 83709 uh, nine-piece tooling set. Uh, we've got it up inside the adapter that comes with the tool. We've got it locked in place. Um, set screw is tightened. We've also set the depth on just how far this tip can go. This is where your stop comes into play because you don't want to press too deeply or too lightly. You have set it up now for it to punch into the styrene material just enough to simulate rivets on the opposite side. So I drew a quick line on here um, and I'm going to follow that line. I'm going to lay out some, some punches on it, five or six punches. We're going to turn it over. I'm going to see what it looks like. I've laid another piece of styrene underneath it um, in order to keep the, the piece that I want from, from bowing or flexing excessively. And one more. Okay, let's see what we have. So, I rushed it a little bit. Could have been better precision on the line, but there's your simulated rivets. What we have here is the simulated rivets in the styrene, and from an operation I did prior in the tin plate. Again, pretty nice rivet simulation for your modeling needs. Another tip, it's an end of the day tip. Micromark sells super magnets. Um, it is our 84991. It's a tube of 40 magnets that you get. And one cool use for these super magnets um, would work great with these this uh, Arbor Press because it's metal. You slide a magnet off and stick it to your tool. And it makes a great place to store your Allen wrenches that work with that particular tool.